going to punch Michael. Okay, we're on, you're on. Well, good morning, and um, church, let's stand and let's turn towards the camera. And uh, why don't you just give everybody a big wave there. Come on, just say hello, shout hello, how are you, everybody, uh, give everybody a wave. And um, so awesome to be in church together. And we know you're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. So welcome to all of you who are watching the live streaming and from us here in church. <clears throat> it's, it's really a blessing. And um, I have already welcomed, but I, I really want to welcome Brother Governor and just tell everybody, you know, he was always an inspiration to teach him myself. Um, he, uh, yeah, he really is. And, and never afraid to witness to anybody. Never afraid to witness to anybody. What a blessing um, to have him here this morning. But I want to welcome you all here this morning. And, and I just know you're going to be blessed by the Word of God, because the Word of God just blesses us. Amen? And um, I'm excited about this message, and I, I believe that the Holy Spirit will just move in our hearts. And I want you to know this morning that you are anointed. And uh, it's that anointing that carries us through and sees us through. Um, it's the, the absolute yoke destroying, bondage destroying, uh, shatters and demolishes strongholds is the anointing of God. Amen. And so I'm very excited about the word this morning, what God's going to do. And, you, you know, we all say that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Amen. And that's word. But I'm going to ask you something this morning. I'm going to share something with you that I really believe is the church's role in what's happening in today's world. Um, because actually we are the ones that God has chosen and we are the ones that are equipped to change the world. Amen? So we look at COVID, we look at crime, we look at corruption, we look at abuse, we look at the economies of the world, everything that's going on right now. But God is still on the throne. God is still almighty. Amen. God is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Do we believe that? Amen. And um, so I'm going to ask us something. We as the church have an important role to play. And so I'm going to ask you to join me in a seven-day fast. Now, I know you must probably be thinking, no, I don't want to go on a fast, it's cold, and I, and I like my hot chocolate and soup and whatever. <laughs> I'm not asking you to go on a total fast. And I'm giving you a week to prepare for it. So I'd like us to start a fast and fast and pray against these things from Monday the 17th of August for seven days till the 23rd of August, if I got my maths right. I don't know. And... Um, it doesn't have to be a Daniel fast. It doesn't have to be a total fast. You can fast one meal a day. You can fast partially. You can go on a liquid fast, or you can do the Daniel fast. Uh, however the Lord leads you. But I think it's time the church stepped up, and we used our authority to stop what's going on. Amen. And there's nothing that changes our world and the world around us, like us corporately, praying and fasting. And so I'm, I'm asking you to join us um, in those seven days. It's not this Monday, it's from the Monday afterwards for seven days. Let's set aside a time where we really seek God and pray against these things and pray for the kingdom of heaven to come down. Um, you, you, you know, there's nothing, I believe, like corporate prayer. And fasting changes things. And so if we as a church can join in, and maybe there are other people all over fasting as well, um, but I want us to do it corporately. And during next week, I'll be sending out some guidelines to you so you get some guidelines so we all pray together. And uh, during that week, I'll be sending out short encouragement uh, messages each day just to spur us on to pray. And who believes that if we come together to fast and pray, things will change? Amen. And, and I think it's about time we as the church stood up. Yes, we fasted in the beginning of the year. We had the Daniel fast. But hey, that doesn't mean we can't do it again and really take our authority over things. So I'm asking that you'll do that. Take our rightful stand 
and let's start changing what the devil's trying to do. Amen. Um, yeah. And you, you know, this morning, I just want to declare over, uh, we, we had one of our neighbors with COVID and um, we've had some people in the church recover and they're fine now. But I just declare over everyone that's suffering with that or fearing that, that they will know God is still Jehovah Rapha, the healer. And I declare that they will be healed and well and complete in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and I just speak to those who perhaps uh, become lonely in the lockdown or a little bit down. I declare a garment of praise on you. I declare that the Christ in you will ro- be raised up and you'll just be blessed and full of the joy of the Lord. And we will know that this isn't going to last forever. Amen. And I look forward to the day when we can put all the chairs back <laughs> and have everybody in church. And I believe it's coming. Amen. And we've got to have the faith for that. So I just want to pray for those that are perhaps feeling the crunch of, of um, uh, uh, COVID and the lockdown. And I speak to those who perhaps lost your jobs. Don't lose heart. God is in control. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. And God will provide for you. Just trust him. Keep doing what he's asking. And God will provide for you. I don't believe that God can go against his word. And the word says the righteous will not beg bread. Amen. And, and he's given us abilities. And if we trust him and believe in him, he will open a way even in lockdown. So I just declare that over you. I speak that God is God. He is the I am in every situation. He's never changed. And, and we have such hope, don't we, this morning? We have incredible hope to know that God in his word stands and stands forever. And um, <laughs> so I, I, I just want us to give him praise this morning from our hearts and um, just keep praying for one another. But believe that God is able to do all things. Amen. And um, <clears throat> I know that, that we're going to be blessed. Um, and, you know, I just want to share, I've shared each week about other people I've known and how the Lord has blessed them and um, uh, how the Lord's undertaken in a big way for them. But I want you to know that as a church, as RLC, as Revival Lifestyle Church, we don't just um, get your your tithes and offerings uh, to meet all the needs and to spread the gospel and to do all live stream and everything we do. We also sow. And we also sow into ministries and, and lives uh, because that's a principle of God, amen. And um, uh, Michael at the back has been so faithful with his camera and coming in, and Johan, and uh, he's going to be going back to varsity soon, hopefully, hey? next month maybe. And um, so we were looking at uh, we we would need a camera, and I don't want to tell you how old Johan's laptop is and can't cope and a bit out of fashion. We needed a new mic. And I want to tell you, in this lockdown, someone's, someone has sponsored the camera, a new laptop, what we need, and a new mic for us. Can we give God praise for that? Um, and, and, and I want to tell you, that's quite a lot of money. That hasn't even come out of the church's pocket. Someone's just sponsored that for us. And I want to encourage you, because we believe as a church we need to sow. And we need to bless and we need to give into places that are our storehouse for our church. And here God's just undertaken and blessed us. That, that's, I just get excited about that. Amen. That God can do it. I mean, it's not a small amount. And um, so God is good. And I want to encourage you. He is Jehovah Jireh. He shall meet your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. And so let's keep trusting. Let's keep saying. And let's keep believing. This morning, uh, uh, we, we've been dealing with Judgment Day and um, things about Judgment Day. And um, I've entitled this morning's message, Prepared and Equipped. Because who knows we need to be prepared for Judgment Day and we need to be equipped for Judgment Day. And over the last two weeks, we've looked at how Jesus showed us what we must do. He gave us direction how we must live so that on Judgment Day, uh, we'll be part of the sheep that goes into the kingdom of heaven. And um, last week we looked at the power of the blood of Jesus. And we went back to Exodus in Egypt where they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. And the angel of death passed. 
and we saw how powerful that is relating to what Christ actually did for us and how powerful the blood is in our lives. Amen? And um, the, the, this morning I want to look at something and um, I'm spending a few weeks on helping us to be equipped and ready for the second coming before we go into what will actually happen. And um, I want to go to Matthew 16 and verses um, 15 to 16. And what Jesus is saying, he's saying, people, who do people say I am? And some say I'm Elijah, uh, some, some say John the Baptist, others Jeremiah. But then Jesus asks his disciples, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the anointed one. That word Christ there means the anointed one. You are Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And of course, uh, Jesus answered and, and, and said that, you know, uh, this hasn't be re been revealed to you by flesh and blood. My father has revealed this to you. But I want us to look at Peter. Peter, perhaps more than anyone else, <laughs> knew what the anointing could do. And I wonder if we know what the anointing can do. As a fisherman, he'd experienced Jesus coming on board the boat <laughs> after he'd used it. And after Peter had been fishing all night, Jesus drew fish to the boat and said to them, put your net on the other side. And they caught a net breaking, just about boat sinking catch. Peter had seen what the anointing could do. He saw what Jesus could do. Um, he actually saw multitudes, multitudes of people be fed with a few loaves and a few fishes. And you know, in our lifetime, my son's here, and he'll remember Tish and I. Um, one family phoned us at the end of one month. This was years ago. The kids were still small. And said, we haven't got much. Uh, have you, what have you got for food? Maybe we could put it together and all eat together. And there was another family that had a need. And so the one who had some potatoes and onions brought them. Another one who had some carrots brought them. And somebody had some fish. And, and, and so the three families got together. And we cooked this all together. <laughs> and it didn't look like much. But I tell you what, all the adults were well fed, and when the kids came in from playing, they were all fed, and there was more left over. I want to tell you, God is the God of more than enough. Amen. And he can do the miraculous. But Peter had seen Jesus take these few loaves and fishes and feed multitudes. He'd seen him heal multitudes of people. He'd seen Jesus drive demons out and deliver people and set them free from oppression. Peter himself, at the Lord's instruction, had gone to collect, collect tax money out of a fish. I remember when I read that, I felt tempted to go fishing. <laughs> and hoping every fish I pulled out would have some gold coins in it. But that was at God's instruction. But Peter had seen that and experienced it. He'd even walked on water at Jesus' command. So if there was anyone who knew firsthand what Jesus could do it was Peter. And Peter realized why Jesus could do these things. It was the anointing of God on Christ's life. Amen? It was that anointing. And um, <laughs> so when Peter heard Jesus say, and we all know these scriptures well, in Acts chapter 1, verse 5 and 8, and I'm, I, I'm, I haven't putting all the scriptures up, but I just want to give you the key there. Jesus said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's speaking to his disciples. Are there any disciples here this morning of Jesus? He said, you will be baptized um, in the Holy Spirit. And then, in verse 8, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. To what? To be my witnesses. Amen? So we'll receive the power to be God's witnesses. Peter knew what God was talking about. <laughs> Peter, I think, in his heart, 
his heart must have leapt and said, Oh Lord, um, we're going to get that. You are telling us we are going to get that same yoke destroying, burden removing, delivering anointing that is on you. That power that was on Jesus, you are saying is going to come on me. Church, do we understand this? The same power that was on Christ, he said, we will receive. Amen? That should change the way we think and live and live out our Christianity. I think Peter must have said, and I'm just using my own imagination here. <laughs> I'm thinking of what I most probably would have said. I would have said, what? We're going to be equipped to do the work that Jesus did. Amen? Because that's what he's saying. All right? Isn't that exciting and encouraging? I'm being blessed at this message myself. I don't know if you are, but I'm getting more excited about it. Okay? That is what is on us. But Peter didn't know anything else. He just knew and saw what Jesus did through the anointing on him. Peter hadn't gone to seminary where you learn how to be a pastor. Jesus didn't, uh, uh, Peter didn't have any theologians to talk to who could say, no, no, Peter, that power is a thing of the past. It doesn't exist anymore. It stopped when Jesus died. He didn't have that. Um, he didn't have people to calm him down. And say, so you're getting too radical. Have any of you ever been told you're perhaps a bit radical? <laughs> they didn't have people to calm him down and say, Peter, chill a bit, chill. Don't be so radical. Um, he just knew what Jesus did. And he knew that by the words Jesus was speaking in Acts, that he would be anointed to do the same thing. And for every believer this morning, we are anointed to do the same things. Amen. Come on, can I have a better amen than that? Amen. We are anointed to do the same things, okay? And um, he just knew that the anointing of the living God, Jesus was saying, was coming on him. So I have a question. Why are believers today not as excited about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and what it can do? Why is the church... Not experiencing what the disciples experienced and seeing the signs and wonders that the first disciples did with that power and that authority because of the anointing. And I think most believers, and I'm, I'm including myself in this, so please, I'm not excluding myself. Most of us believers get baptized and the anointing's on us and we do speak in tongues now and again. And we feel if we're speaking in tongues, that's it, we've got the anointing. I believe it's because of this. <laughs> and I'm excited to share this with you because it's been exciting my heart since I've been, praying, been preparing this message and I'm asking God for this. It's because we have a limited revelation of what can actually happen when the anointing of Jesus operates through us. Come on, how many of us have got a full revelation that, man, that anointing's on me. I can go cast out the demons. I can heal the sick. Uh, I can preach the word with boldness. I can do what Jesus did. We need a revelation of it. I think church has become a place where we come and we sing worship songs and we get ministered to and we go home and we get blessed and we get prayed for if we're sick. But the church wasn't meant to be that. Amen. The church was meant to be dynamic in the anointing of God and have God's anointing on them to go and do what he said we would do. And I believe, and, and please, maybe you've got the revelation, but I'm asking God to give me the full revelation of that. Because I shouldn't be living just a mundane, um, average, moderate Christian life. Amen? We should be doing and living the exceptional life in the anointing and in Jesus. Amen? So I don't know about you, but, but I really need that, that, that more of that revelation. Um, you see, because the truth is, there is an anointing on the church through Jesus Christ that the Father sent to the church in His name that could cause us to do anything and everything righteous and that we can act out what Jesus did on the face of this earth today, just as they did there, in our own lives, come on, enabling us to stand in the times we're going to go through, amen, it's that anointing, by every person 
that knows Jesus Christ as Lord. Am I right? Is that what the word says? <laughs> Every one of us should have it. Should be, that, that's why we should be overcomers and victorious, and that's why we should stand. You and I, if we get the revelation, are actually anointed. <laughs> now listen to me. You might say, really? I said really to myself when this came to me. We are actually anointed to be mighty, world-overcoming, world-changing people and see our lives changed and equipped to stand. Amen? That's what it's about. And that's you and I. That's what we're anointed for. And I wonder if you recall Elisha's prayer for his servant in 2 Kings 6.17. You see, Elisha's servant came out and he just saw all these armies surrounding, surrounding him and Elisha and he thought they were, they were finished. And he goes in and he tells Elisha, look at this. And what does Elisha pray? It says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he might see. <laughs> and what did the young man see? This young servant he suddenly saw the mountain full of chariots of fire and horsemen. God had sent the heavenly host to protect Elisha and his servant. I, you know, just, 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 just for a second. <laughs> Can you imagine um, Elisha's running, his servant runs out and sees all these, this vast army surrounding them. Hmm? Come on. We human, do you think there would have been a little bit of fear? Hmm? A little bit of stress? Here's just me, a servant, and my master. We've got nothing. We've got no arms. We've got nothing. And he has this vast army surrounding us. And he must have come in in fear. I said, my master, do you see what's around us? And all that Elisha prayed was, Lord, open his eyes to see. And when his eyes were opened, I mean, can you imagine how that fear changed? <laughs> <laughs> to all, I think he must have just fallen down and said, what? His eyes saw the heavenly armies around them, chariots of fire and the horsemen. Whoa, come on. Amen. Man, what a blessing. I mean, he must have, you know, uh, he must have walked, looked at the other armies and gone, ha, 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 ha. you know, uh, uh, you know, what can you do to us? Look what's surrounding us. Amen. But what Elisha had to pray for his eyes to be opened. And, and, and I think as far as the anointing is concerned and, 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 and what we, the times we are living, I think we need to pray and ask God, Lord, open our eyes to the anointing that is on us. Amen? Give us that revelation. I'm, I'm not just a mundane average person or just a, just a Christian born again. I'm an anointed and appointed servant of the Most High God. Amen? called to do mighty things and great things. And um, ask God to, to, to give us a revelation of the baptism in His Holy Spirit and fire. Do you know what would happen if that, if, if that took place? <laughs> and the church realized the authority um, and that the powers of the heavens are available to us. We would change circumstances, situations, and our lives will be transformed. Amen. And we'd be able to stand through anything and everything. But we need to live in faith in that promise. And, and, and I want to throw a challenge out that you look at those verses of Acts every day this week and see what the Lord has said is going to come on us. Come on. Your know, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And you take Acts chapter 1 and you read verse 5 and verse 8 and you just keep in your heart and you just say, Lord, I thank you that I am baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit to be your witnesses. Amen. Amen. When last, I, I want to ask you, when last have you confessed that? <laughs> now the Lord challenged me in preparing this. Hey, son, when last have you confessed that for you? Huh? And so I've been starting to say, Lord, I'm baptized and I'm anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit to be your witness. Amen. And you know what it does? Man, it gives you vuma. You, you, you feel like Goliath. 
you feel 10 foot tall and you feel you're ready to take on anybody. So we need to do that. But we need to have faith in the promise. We need to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit on us. Won't you say with me right now, say after me, Father, I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is on me and works within me. I am anointed to do everything you've called me to do in Jesus' name. Now give God a praise for that. Come on, give him a good praise for that. Amen. All right. You, you see, we also need to know what the anointing will do in us. Listen, Peter, this fisherman who'd seen all those things, Peter, who, who would always make a big mistake and put his foot in it sideways and deny Jesus. <laughs> and, and maybe there's some of you here this morning will happen to you when, when you get the, the fire on you and you know the Holy Spirit's on you. Man, I'm enjoying this message. Amen. I'm excited about it. I remember my lovely wife, Tish, she always used to say, you know, when we preach about the Holy Spirit or anointing, something happens. And I just feel something's happening somewhere. Amen? But, you, you, you know, if we understand what power is ours, and, and if, if, if you believe that it's for you, don't think I'm not good enough. Man, Peter, this fisherman who messed it up so many times, he gets baptized with fire, tongues of fire. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit, runs out into the street, speaking in an unknown tongue. And this Peter, what does he do? He stands up and he preaches an anointed message for 10 minutes and 3,000 souls get saved. Hello? <laughs> So what I started to say, well, hey, hey, Andre, what's happening in your life then? <laughs> hmm? Because the anointing's on us. You know, we should walk out in that marketplace and it will be changed. Amen? Totally changed. You walk into your workplace and, and it should change. Amen? Because the anointing is on you. Uh, you. You mustn't think, well, I've done this in my life and I've done that in my life, so the anointing's not on me. I'll show you next week the anointing is still on you. Amen? But we've got to believe it. We've got to receive it. I mean, the, uh, 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 Peter is transformed. How many of us are longing for transformation in our lives? How many of us are longing to, to be that bold witness for Jesus? How many of us are longing to do the things Jesus said we do? It's the anointing. You've got to believe it. You've got to receive it. And then you've got to live in it. Amen? Turn, well, you can't turn to, well, just face someone and say, live in it. Come on, tell them. Say, live, point your finger at them and say, live in it. Come on, live in it. Yeah. It's our strength and joy that will carry us through. Um, it, it, it will give us what we need for the end times. It will give us that strength and ability to stand no matter what comes about uh, in our lives. And we need to be prepared. Now, in um, Matthew 25, and we all know the story, but this is really Christ's farewell message of caution to the church of what could happen at the end times. And it's the parable of the wise and foolish virgins or bridesmaids. And in Matthew 25, from verse 1, and I'm going to read all the verses to you so we understand it and hear it again. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Jesus. He's coming. Who believes he's coming? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Say, I want to be wise and not foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Now, those lamps, if you've seen what they used to use, was, was probably a tall lamp on, on, on a reed or a rod. And on top, they had a lot of cloth in that wrap. And those virgins would have come with the doused with oil to keep the fire burning. But they had used a lot of oil. 
So you would have had to take extra oil with you to keep it going. Amen. And then it says, at midnight, a cry was heard. Does that midnight sound familiar? Jesus will come like a thief at night. Could come in the middle of the night. Amen. Um, and at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. That means they got them ready. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. So they, they had doused their lamps, but it wasn't enough. But the wise answered, saying, no. Now remember, this is Jesus telling this parable. These are Jesus' words. The wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know, uh, you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Now, for those of you who saw the documentary on, 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 on the Israel weddings or the Jewish weddings, which was on one of the programs recently, I think just a month or so ago, it was very good. This will become real. You, you see, when Jesus said the Father knows the time, in those years, and I think we should bring it back, you know, when people get married, you know, the Father will decide when the groom can fetch his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in those years what happened everything was ready everything was prepared the reception was prepared uh, the bride had her bride dress her bridesmaid had their bridesmaid's dress but they didn't know when the groom's father would say to them the time is now go fetch your bride and it was normally late at night and um, so what would happen is the, the, the groom would be waiting patiently is my dad going to tell me I can go tonight I really want to get married. <laughs> Not tonight. Oh, next night. Hope my dad's going to tell me tonight. You know, uh, I, 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 want, I want my bride. And the bride goes to bed all dressed, all ready. Well, she doesn't know when the groom is coming. And so then what happens? The father says to the son, tonight, go fetch your bride. And so there's a big celebration. I mean, the groom's happy, his groomsmen are with him, and the people start following, and they bring their lanterns, and everybody's rejoicing, and they, they run into the bride and say, your groom is coming, and she gets up and quickly gets ready and, you know, uh, puts some extra lipstick on or whatever, <laughs> and, um, and, and goes out to meet him. And then they all make the procession to the father's house to celebrate. And... When they get to the house and all the guests are in, they close the doors and they don't let anybody else in. It was to protect the guests. It was to ensure everything went well. And here Jesus is giving this parable of literally we've got to understand the Father will tell him, because no one knows the time, when he can come fetch us, the church, his bride. But the question is, are we ready? The question is, are we dressed and ready? Are we equipped? Are we empowered? Are we ready that when we hear that trumpet call, we can arise with our lanterns full of oil? What is oil? Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that oil is representing the Holy Spirit. Are, are we alive or are we aglow with the Holy Spirit when He comes? Because you know what? If we are, we'll be able to follow that procession to the Father's house. But then the doors are going to be closed. And those without oil, who have not got oil, are going to be locked out. And he has Christ's farewell sermon to his disciples. And he's literally saying, watch and be ready. Now we heard that in the first message when we spoke about judgment. Watch and be ready. He's telling us here not to be foolish. To have enough oil to be ready, to make provision for what is coming. And I know that for a lot of people, you know, oh, well, I was filled with the Holy Spirit 20 years ago. No, 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 you need a fresh filling every day. Amen? 
You need to come before God in His presence and get that anointing in your life every day. Amen? You need to be filled so that if He comes tonight, you are ready um, for Him. You've got to make provision. And, and, and they were slumbering and sleeping. And we heard in the first message, Jesus says, watch and be alert. Church, we cannot slumber. We, uh, we cannot say, well, oh, well, the Lord's taken so long to come. You know, I spoke to a man many, many years ago who'd been through Bible school, who knew the Word, and now was living a complacent lifestyle. And I was still in Pretoria, so it was before I even met Tish. And I spoke to him one day, and I said to him, Gene, you know the Word. Uh, you know, aren't you concerned that you're not ready? And he said, ah, I'm still young, and I've got a long life ahead of me, and when I see the signs that Jesus is coming, <clears throat> um, I will get my life ready. But if the Lord required that man's life before he came, he wouldn't have been ready. You see, we can say, ach, yeah, moeder is noch a dag. Huh? Favorite South African expression, moeder is noch a dag. Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. I haven't spent time today. No, no, today. Church, I believe really, I'm, I'm so blessed about this message that, that Jesus gave us the signs and things we need to do. Amen. We need to be ready today. And um, no slumbering, no sleeping. Be alert. Get in the Word. Pray. Speak that anointing into your life. Receive that baptism. And if you feel you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're going to just ask the Lord to fill us at the end of the service. Don't become careless. Understand who you are as an ambassador of God. Jesus is clarifying here what it means to be ready on his return. And there are a few points I want to stress. When the unwise came to the wise and said, give us some of your oil, they said, no, you've got to go buy your own. Hello? <laughs> Otherwise, we might not have enough. Every person, every single Christian is responsible for his or her own spiritual walk. Hello? You can't stand before the Lord one day. Hello? <laughs> I can't stand before the Lord one day and say, well, you know, Lord, there was that person in the church that offended me. Well, you know, this went wrong. Well, Lord, you know, I got upset because this brother didn't love me enough or whatever, or, or the church didn't look after me. We have to work out our own salvation. And we cannot, this is why church, we must get rid of offense and, and, and all that stuff. It blocks us. I cannot stand before the Lord one day and say, oh, well, you know, the way Shane spoke to me in the office, I thought I'm never going to you know, do my stuff again. Hmm? Come on. Or maybe it's the other way around, the way I spoke to Shane in the office and she doesn't, whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> we cannot do that. He's saying you can't get it from someone else. You can't buy from someone else. You have to get it yourself. Church, if, if there's something I want you to hear, please hear me this morning. Each of us have our own responsibility to be ready. And we cannot blame anybody else. Amen? And you know, maybe other people have let us down or made mistakes. You know what? That's still not an excuse. The second thing I want to tell us that I get from this is spiritual preparation cannot be bought or borrowed at the last minute. Hello? <laughs> because when that groom comes, he comes. <laughs> Amen? We can't then run out and do something. And then we've got to have the oil. We've got to have sufficient oil. We've got to have that anointing in our lives. We've got to have the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the fourth thing that I learned from this is when that door closes, it's closed. That's it. If you're not in, you're not in. So we need to be prepared and equipped. And church, it's the anointing that will do it. And I want to say what I said earlier. I, 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 I don't know how many times I need to say this. Don't let the devil deceive you that you're not good enough for the anointing. Come on. Amen. He said that over all his disciples. Were his disciples perfect? No. No. <laughs> 
The most anointed men and women of God, are they perfect? No. But the devil will say to you, oh, but who are you? Look what you've done. You know, how can you say you're anointed? I, I, I don't say I'm an anointed. Jesus said, I will be anointed. Come on. Jesus said, when that power comes on me, I will do. Amen. He didn't say, when you, when you are 100% right, and when you've got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed, and when you can live 100% perfect. Amen. And church, we... We, we're losing the power and the sorry that's us because we, we feel we're not good enough. We feel we're insignificant. There's no one in God's kingdom that's insignificant. Amen? Nobody. Not a single, single person. So live in it. Receive it. Ask the Lord to open your eyes and, and, and believe it. Jesus said in Acts, you will receive it. And I want to ask you this morning, will you receive it today? Will you receive it today? We don't know the time. <laughs> we don't know. As a fact, I'm, I'm not going to say who or what, but the person here, so you could clarify it, um, <laughs> who said he, he heard a ram's horn. <laughs> I can't make my say it. <laughs> It was Dion. Dion said he heard a ram's horn one night. Ram's horn one night. And he jumped up and he thought, the Lord's coming. <laughs> Am I ready? Lord, don't forget me. <laughs> but it could happen. It could happen. Are we ready? And I believe if we are, we'll be prepared for judgment day. We'll be prepared for the groom Jesus coming back for his church. Isn't that awesome? You know what's amazing about this? Jesus has done it all for us. We just got to pick up faith and believe it and receive it. Amen. Doesn't matter where you are, what your address is, what job you do, who you are, whether you're in Hong Kong, in, in Chow Mein, or wherever, <laughs> or in good old Rustenburg. Amen. It's there for us. So we got to receive it. So I just trust that's helped you a bit and inspired you a little bit. Uh, to get out and go there and get ready for the coming of the king before that judgment day. Amen? So I'm going to ask us this morning, um, will you receive it today? And you know the only way we do it is to ask the Lord, Lord, open our eyes to see the anointing on us. And I receive it in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill me right now. To be the anointed one who will be your anointed servant. Amen. Now that's it. Jesus has done it. You, but, but one, you see, that's why last week I preached on the blood. Because Jesus said, well, come on you. When did it come on you? After he had gone to the cross. So when we saved and when we born again and our faith is in the blood of Jesus, guess what? You can get anointed. You are anointed and you will be anointed. Amen. Do you believe that? So can we pray that this morning? Uh, even though perhaps some of us are full to overflowing and we're full with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask those at home um, to get from out your, un, under your duvets or kick the blankets off your couch and stand up with us this morning. Let us be a church that will arise. You, you, you know, I spoke to Anton from Bibles from Africa this week and I've asked him and his wife to join me in one of my sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays about uh, volcanic marriages. <laughs> and, you, you know, both of us said the same thing. It's time for the church to step up and step into everything God's got for us. Amen? So today's the day. And you know what? You're here and you're listening to this for a reason. I really believe it. And so we're going to stand and do that. Let's stand and, 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 and just, just close your eyes and lift your hands to heaven or just stretch your hands out as if you're receiving something. And I'm going to pray that I'm going to ask you all to pray after me. Father, I bless you this morning for what Jesus did at that cross for us. I thank you for that blood that was shed and that body that was broken for us. And Lord, we saw last week the power of that. But Lord, I'm coming to you today and declaring because of what Jesus did in that cross, we can live in the promise of his words that we'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit and that we will receive power to be his witnesses. 
And I thank you, you're not a respecter of persons here. Hallelujah. And Lord, I believe that as we ask, you're a God who hears us and we'll receive it. And so, Father, I'm asking as we all stand in your presence, and Lord, as we raise our hands to you, that Holy Spirit, you will come in your power and your mind. Holy Spirit, you'll come and fill us afresh this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord, that we'll be like Peter. We'll realize what that anointing has done on us. Lord, we'll be like the servant of Elisha and have our eyes open to see the power and the blessing that's in our lives and on our lives because of the anointing, because of you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask him for it in faith this morning. So church, just simply, there's this, I always used to say to teach, there should be a bigger deal about this, but it's simply coming and asking in faith. Amen? So as we raise our hands, won't you pray after me? Say, Father, I thank you for my Savior, Jesus Christ, who died in Calvary for me and shed his blood for me, that I can come and enter the Holy of Holies. And this morning as I do that in faith, I raise my hands and I say, Holy Spirit, according to the promise of Christ, baptize me now. Lord, may I be baptized in your Holy Spirit. And may that power to be your witness, fill my life now in Jesus' name. So Holy Spirit, I invite you to take control of my life, to fill me, to be that one who will strengthen me and comfort me and counsel me. But most of all, empower me to do the works that Jesus said. And I believe it's mine. And I receive it in faith. And I bless you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And let's give the Lord a big praise offering. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And now I want you to go home <laughs> excited and blessed. Amen. And then step out the way we know the means is to step out and start doing the things. Amen? Do you believe that? Who believes nothing's impossible for our God? Absolutely nothing. So I pray you'll be blessed today. Um, we're going to close with, I think that sung, song, second song we sang, you know, I think that's a good one to close off with. And I, I invite all those on the live stream in to just hang on a minute or two while your hand switches over so Kids Zone can come on. Get your kids to watch Kids Zone and be blessed. But I want to ask us one thing. Are we blessed? Yes. Are we anointed? Yes. In Jesus' name we are. Amen. Well, God bless you and all praise to the Lord. Come on, let's give him another praise offering. Amen. And for those who watch the live streaming, God bless you. Have a spirit-filled weekend. And us here, may the Spirit of God fill you, empower you, and bless you, and prosper you, and favor you in this week. Amen. That God will, these people will see God's glory on us and not us. Amen. So let's close with that song. And there's coffee for us here at church afterwards. Join us for coffee. God bless you.
Good morning friends, how are you? I'm missing all you guys um, and obviously you can see this morning but this is actually a mask, it's not a hat but I'm wearing my mask the wrong way it's not covering my nose or my mouth and it should actually be worn like this see like that obviously the way I was wearing it deserve a red pen <clears throat> it being a red pen I mean obviously it's cool just like you guys I didn't like this color at all <clears throat> I can remember how the teacher used to walk around from desk in each row and she'd walk around with a red pen and she would mock and mock and mock you know eventually you get a fright when you don't do it properly it looks like that but it is scary and then you, you end up getting getting a mark that looks like that that's a F minus you know and part of my brain exercises and homework I have to do things like this, and it's called Sudoku. But it's, it's also very hard, and sometimes when it gets too hard, and then I just want to cheat. You know, it's tempting to look in the back of the book, and all the answers are there, you see. But only by cheating, and I'll cheat myself, I'll cheat my brain. Have any you, any of you ever had a situation where where you have a good friend sitting next to you? You need the right answer because you aren't sure. That's very difficult because we you are you are pressured to get things right. I mean, you know the Bible tells us. that when we get bigger we're gonna face temptations like Jesus that you know it can be things like lying or cheating being dishonest you know if you look around you you can see a lot of things like that in the world today <clears throat> and the Bible tells us exactly that in Matthew 4 verses 4 to 11 but we all have a choice I mean sometimes we can just go with the flow or be in with the crowd we can be the cool kid in school <clears throat> always being the naughty one or the dishonest one or the rebellious child in school but we have a choice but God told calls us to be a light in the world. Sometimes we just have to have courage, stand up and do the right thing. Like not to wear flowers <laughs> in your headwear. Okay, love you guys. <laughs>